Welcome to another Kings of War Battle Report, Wildcat Practice, Undead vs. Night Stalkers, 2,000 points plus the Wildcat. The scenario was Salt the Earth. So I totally ripped off most of this list from Tom Annis and his uh, Undead Army he was taking to a tournament this week. So it starts off with three troops of Revenant Cavalry, two regiments of Zombies, one regiment of Soul Reaver Cavalry with the uh, J-Boots, two regiments of Soul Reaver Infantry, the Staying Stone and the Chalice of Wrath, a horde of whites, a vampire on undead Pegasus with the Dwarven Ale, and two Revenant Kings, one with the Mace of Crushing and the other with the Sword of Slashing, plus the Wildcat. This list is not exactly like Tom's because I didn't have the models for a second horde of whites, so I just replaced them with my uh, Soul Reaver Cavalry, which is about the same amount of points. Okay, my friend Jeff is getting ready to go to his first Kings of War tournament. So this is his new Night Stalkers army he's been working on for a while. Starts out with two hordes of Scarecrows, both with the Scream Shard. One regiment of Doppelgangers. Two regiments of Reapers, both with the Scream Shard. A horde of Butchers. One Mind Screech. A Planar Apparition. Unit of Soul Flayers. A Terror. A Horror. And then the Butcher Flesh Ripper. The Night Cat, a.k.a. the Wild Cat with our total of 24 unit strength and 12 drops. So the game started uh, in the middle of turn one, and I did not actually get a picture before turn one, so you really are just seeing the kind of first end of first turn and turn one at the same time. Over on the left, on his side of the line, you have the Butcher Hero, and then the Wildcat, which is my Fire Elemental, and then his Reavers. Reavers? Reavers. And in, in the woods is the terror. Uh, next to them, you have two hordes of scarecrows. And that's all facing on my side down here. I had my uh, wildcat. And next to them was one of my units of soul reaver infantry. Besides them is my first unit of zombies. And then the second unit of soul reaver infantry. And then the other unit of zombies to the far right. Continuing on with the line, there was a unit of zombies to the left, but what you're seeing on the hill is my first unit of Revenant Cav stuck on the hill, and then the Soul Reaver Cavalry, and there's a little blue chit that's just to mark uh, outside of his charge range, and then the uh, uh, I'd moved up the Revenant Cav and uh, tilted towards so I could see where his Reapers are. Over to the right, you can barely see them, but there is my unit of whites, and next to them is the Revenant King, a Revenant King. There's also a Revenant King behind the unit of Revenants here. And the very back behind them is my uh, Pegasus Vampire. And so he is back there. And, it, and it's kind of weird because of the uh, height. You know, he can see over and do anything he wants to do. The unit there to the immediate left is his unit of Scarecrows. And besides them is a unit of Reapers. They're kind of right at the edge of the woods there. Over on this side, you have a unit of Butchers. Behind the Butchers is a unit of Soul Flayers, and then the Mind Screech and the Planar Apparition had moved up to uh, throw a lightning bolt, and I think he threw it at my unit of uh, Revenants over here on this side, doing only a single wound. I mean, I'm sorry, on my unit of Whites, and only doing a single wound. So this was the end of turn one for both players. Over here, the Butchers, because I was going to charge them anyway with my Flyers, had went ahead and moved up to within an inch to at least trap me beside this tower. So that was the end of the turn. They stopped an inch away, and I was going to really have no choice. Of course, I had not fly. I could jump over them and charge something else, but there really wasn't anything else in range, and I needed to get rid of this unit anyway. So over here, the uh, Soul Flayers, they went ahead and charged into my Revenant Cav doing four wounds. The first roll killed them, but the second roll was saved by the um, Revenant King, who you can see is sitting right behind them. So I was poised to make my... Uh, second turn move and to see what was going to happen after this because I have a good lineup on the charge of that those reapers in the front and of course I can just charge the whites and the other revenant king back into the uh, butchers and try to get rid of them on this side uh, the only thing that he had that could charge me was the wildcat and I moved up on purpose so that the only thing that was in range was like at like 13 inches and three quarters so he could make it in by a quarter inch so I thought I wanted him to charge in at one time so maybe I could pinch the wildcat off and part of the reason is because he has inspiring which is really the uh, uh, 
Night Stalker army is starved for sometimes. So, so I went ahead and just tried to lure him into the fight, and uh, he he did a significant amount of damage to those uh, to that infantry. But uh, of course, he didn't break it. In the middle, everything just kind of moves straight online and uh, try to keep the uh, frontage together. And of course, my frontage was together, so uh, kind of a standoff at this point. So I did charge the uh, Revenant King and the Whites into the Butchers and got them up to uh, one below their break point, then remembered that I had Brutal, and that way I was able to uh, waver that unit. The uh, Vampire uh, on a Pegasus moved over them, staying an inch away, obviously, and now I'm angled toward the side of his line so that I could start causing uh, some problems in that direction. So the uh, Revenants went ahead and countercharged into the Soul Flares, and I also charged the Revenant King into the fight as well. If you look to the left, that's where my um, cavalry went ahead and charged his unit of reapers there. And uh, I popped my J-boots so that I didn't have to pay for the uh, terrain or the wall. So I was in really good shape there as far as being able to do damage. As you can see here, I did go ahead and charge my Revenant Cav troop into the um, unit of Scarecrows. And the reason why is I didn't want to get flank charged in case I bounced off the uh, reapers. I did go ahead and check her board up with the uh, two zombies and the unit of soul reavers. The uh, thing was, I saw those unit of doppelgangers in the woods, and I really wanted to make sure that those were zombies going against them instead of the my super elite infantry units. So uh, I was moving up there. I've kind of outmatched here just because of the fact that he has like one extra unit there to my extra to my unit. So his wildcat, uh, which I'm now going to call wildfire has uh, charged into my unit of Soul Reavers. And so in my turn, my Wildcat charges him in the flank and then the uh, infantry charges him in the front. I also sent the uh, Revenant Cav into his unit of Reapers. And the reason why is because I just wanted to slow them down. I did not need them up there to join the melee when he's already got uh, more guys on that flank than I do. So anyway, I'm just trying to do a disrupting attack and I want to uh, use, I want to be able to kill his Wildcat uh, as quick as possible because it does have inspire so over here i was able to get the uh, butchers up to uh i did seven wounds and then rolled and then i remembered i had brutal and that absolutely uh allowed me to waver them and uh that was a good thing because now they're kind of stuck and they're actually the, the, they are protecting me themselves by protecting me from the shooting attacks that are that could possibly come in if they just back up I had tremendously good dice rolls against the uh, Soul Flares and destroyed that unit. Um, and of course, I got one of my wounds back from the uh, Life Leech. Uh, up to the um, left, you see that the other cavalry unit has destroyed his Reapers and are now poised on the flank of his unit of Scarecrows. So you can see here that my Soul Reaver Cav absolutely destroyed the Reapers and now are in an excellent pos position to roll up the line. And uh, I've killed, I've got the... Uh, Unit over to my right, the uh, butchers are wavered, the uh, soul flayers are destroyed, and now I am on the flank of the uh, middle of his line, just trying to get these victory points here for the uh, control scenario. I was able to destroy his wildcat, as my wildcat had 14 in the flank. The um, My soul reavers had taken 6 from his wildcat, which is a pretty good roll, and then he, um, but I got 2 back with my life leech, so... Uh, I was back to uh, fighting shape there with those guys, so uh, ready to go. And then the Revenants, I think they did three or four to the Reapers, which is respectable. And uh, But, you know, I was going to pay for it. But I just really needed them not to be able to come dumping in two or three charges on my units at one time. So the uh, Butcher Hero and the Terror ch charged into the flank of the Revenant Cav. Uh, I think I'd wavered the Reapers that time, and that's the reason why they needed to come to the rescue uh, the thing is the Revenant Cav are really good because their armor is five and that makes them really hard to take out, which is like one unit. So you really kind of need two at the same time. So, uh, Jeff was just trying to make sure that those guys were absolutely gone. Jeff flank charged my unit of Revenant Cav with the unit of Scarecrows and he had Bane chanted the Scarecrows. So they were, they easily just destroyed the unit of Revenant Cav. But uh, they're going to have to turn back really quick because there's a lot of nasty stuff coming at them. Jeff was able to skillfully move up his planar apparition and healed 
he had done seven wounds to me. I mean, I'd done seven wounds, and he healed six of the seven with the uh, special ability of the planar apparition, and I was just out of charge range. So he very skillfully moved in there with some good measuring and stuff and brought that unit back to life. But they were wavered, so they were already in trouble anyway. So something else was going to have to happen to them for me to get rid of them. Well, with nothing else better to do, my revenant cav went ahead and flank charged into the butchers, even though they were back to only one wound. I sent the revenant king up there to try to run off the uh, planar apparition and the mind flayer. Um, I know that the planar apparition could bite a little bit, but I'm pretty sure the mind flayer is a sitting duck to getting hit. So over here, the uh, soul reaver cat and the uh, Pegasus Vampire charge into the unit of Scarecrows. The uh, cavalry was hindered because of the charging through some difficult terrain. You can barely see right to the edge of the right. I did charge the zombies and the uh, Soul Reaver infantry into the other unit of Scarecrows. And then over on the left, I put the zombies gleefully into those that unit of uh, doppelgangers, figuring that they could steal their stats if they want to. I go ahead and take a hindered charge into the uh, Butcher Hero. The uh, Wildcat makes a suicide charge into the uh, Reapers, and they were down to up to five wounds, so I thought maybe I could finish them off. His uh, giant head went, I'm sorry, his uh, terror head went ahead and pivoted back toward me after they destroyed the Revenant Cav. And you can see the zombies are attacking the unit of doppelgangers with no success at all. I didn't really do very much damage with the whites, but the uh, Revenant Cav, again, just excels and destroys the uh, butchers. And now I'm, I'm trying to beat down on the Planar Apparition and the Mind Flayer, so they're going to have to make a run for it pretty soon. Okay, the uh, Combined Charged of the Soul Reaver Cav and the Vampire destroyed the first unit of Scarecrows. The uh, second unit of Scarecrows... Uh, did not die, but had taken 12 wounds, so they were in pretty rough shape. Um, but they do have life leech, I think, in the scream shard, so that should be able to get a few of their wounds back. The uh, zombies didn't do anything because it was a hindered charge into the woods, into the doppelgangers, but I just wanted to hold them up so they didn't get the stats of one of my good units. I was not able to kill the butcher hero, and I was in deep trouble because since I didn't, I'm sure that the reapers will come in on my next turn. But the... Uh, terror he went ahead and turned toward my lines because i was uh i was wrapping up his middle so he needed to do something either make a flank charge or something to uh help himself out but all he could really do this turn because of the terrain which is move up and make a, a a turn toward my lines you can see that these these scarecrows had life leached a couple of wounds back but uh and that reason you see why the uh, terror had actually turned because now he was facing the flank of my soul reaver infantry so that was a good move just to uh, try to disrupt me because he could, you know, basically bash through the zombies and then start into going into something else because I'm pretty sure he's got it over there on the left flank with the uh, Busher Hero able to hold off that unit of Soul Reavers that uh, the Reapers will now be able to kill it pretty quickly. So by now I've destroyed all the doppelgangers and everything in between. The uh, I did charge the... Uh, vampire pegasus into the terror and the reason why i just wanted to hold it up till i can get my uh units in position to be able to destroy it on the following turn so if, if my vampire can hold out which he probably will um then i'll be able to get a flank charge in with those soul reaver uh soul reaver knights and of course kill it from there or just hold it up with the uh, unit of zombies you see to the front plus i have a soul reaver infantry unit so if i do a double charge i should be able to kill it anyway so uh, looking grim for the uh, terror over there. So with the uh, unit of whites and the unit of revenants, uh, I was able to be able to take care of both units, uh, both both ends of this table. That was going to give me two points, and I also had easily had the middle of the table with unit strength. So we just called the game at this point and just settled on the score of let's see one, two, three, four, five, two, two. I think that's going to be the end score of the game, and the undead has came out victorious. Many months ago, one of my friends had expressed an interest in playing 
undead. And so I went ahead and converted my old GW undead army into uh, Kings of War. And um, turned out he didn't want to play. So, But I ended up acquiring a ton of Revenant Cav. And some of them, most are all GW models. And some of them are just basic skeletons and stuff. But the uh, thing was, is I went ahead and painted them all and got them done. They're not based, but, but I mean, then it kind of like... I got them all painted, and I don't want to play. Then poof, you know, it kind of knocked the wind out of my sails. But uh, with the uh, tournament coming up, I thought it would be cool to uh, drag them out. And the reason why is because uh, their undead is the biggest army in this tournament that's coming up. So we need to learn how to play against them and to see how to uh, to fight against undead because none of us actually play them and. What's weird about this game is, even though I have Surge, I didn't use it one single time. I just used the, the uh, Undead Troops as troops because they are excellent. I mean, they their guys are just so good. And then the Life Leech to heal some of them back just makes it very rough. Uh, I had a huge speed advantage over Jeff's army. There's really nothing he could do about it unless he was going to sacrifice some of his flyers, who are also his shooters and stuff, to uh, be able to stop me. So I had a big advantage where I could kind of pick and choose all of my attacks. And this turn, you can see this one right here. I mean, because I ended up wiping out these Soul Flares and those uh, Reapers in the same turn and basically eliminating his entire flank. So then I was just able to turn and start rolling it up. But my army's a little different than Tom's army, who I ripped off to uh, do this because I have the uh, Soul Reaver Cav, and, uh, which I think works just as well, honestly, as the uh, Wraiths do. Uh, they're not they're not dependent on the uh, surge, you know, to make them work. So I kind of like that in a way. I'm a little bit a little bit less uh, tied to it. But uh, the biggest problem I see with undead is because of the uh, ability to have shamble, which is kind of neat. But it also slows you down when you need to start. Like if you whack this side of the table here, it's hard to get it back to the other side of the table. Even the flyers, because if their flyers are shambling. You can't get them back over to help you out. So you, you're kind of stuck with what you have. I know it doesn't seem like a huge advantage, but disadvantage, but it is. I mean, you know, when you're just trying to get back, in other words, the Revenant Cav is over here. You kill something, then you got to turn and start moving at, you know, eight inches a turn. And uh, that's like dwarves marching. So it's just, that's just the way it is. But the thing is, is these undead troops are so incredibly powerful that, uh, and not being able to be wavered is just a huge advantage. And, uh, really feel like when I've played with them and against them that they're still slightly under costed for what they're able to be done. But I mean, they are, I mean, you know, the thing is, is that they have a really good balance of cheap units and expensive units. And then they have the Revenant Cav, which to me is like the perfect middle uh, type of troop. So I, I was not really expecting this game to go the way it was. I've been playing some solitaire games against Night Stalkers this week and uh, just, just, killing people with them i mean i know it's i'm killing people with solitaire games but uh the thing is is that they are night stalkers are very very solid high tier army and they are tough they're a tough out so uh, i was shocked by how that how well this game went for me i don't know what would have happened if i would use my one of my other armies but uh the the speed advantage that i had was just huge against this particular army and that and that's what won the game for me just even having that one vampire flyer was enough to uh, distract the uh, Night Stalkers a lot because you had to deal with them. I mean, because I, I wasn't any, because my troops were so good, I wasn't in any rush to rush him in to make him pay for himself. I was just able to just, you know, plod along and see an opportunity and go for it. So uh, that worked really well. But I really do like the Undead Army. I'm not a huge fan of playing it all the time because it's you know sometimes it feels like to me it's not a little unfun uh, i want to i want to play a game that's uh, very challenging all the time and and uh, just running over somebody with with a soul reaver cap is just it's just so gratifying slash nasty that uh it, it makes it uh, like i said it's kind of fun that it feels kind of pathetic in a way because they are so good and uh but anyway, I, I enjoyed the game today. I'm glad Jeff got to play. He's playing against uh, an undead army for the first in the first round of the uh, Wildcat tournament. And uh, what I'll do is I will get uh, the models out for that particular army and uh, be able to uh, let him practice against his actual foe instead of one that's uh, 
obviously Tom's designed his army to, to win tournaments. And it, I'm, I think that he won best general today with basically almost the same army. So you can see that this is a, uh, this is a high tier, uh, even high tier for undead, uh, army. And so, uh, just holding out against it to me is a success in any way, shape, or form. But, uh, I mean, I would hate to face it, to be honest. I mean, they, it just has a lot of stuff going for it. Uh, I just think it could handle the uh, uh, my orc army that well because I have so much chaff in my orc army. And uh, this army, uh, he's going to have to just charge through and kill stuff. That's all there is to it. So, anyway. Uh, it was a great game with Jeff. Jeff's been gone away for the last few weeks, and so... He was just uh, wanting to get a game in today to practice. And like I said, next time I'll have the actual army he's going to face. And uh, his actual foe can see it if he wants to see what uh, the potential outcome is going to be uh, during the tournament, which may or may not be good. But, uh, you know, there's a lot to be learned from these games. Just, to, you know, hey, this unit you avoid it, this unit no, you feed it, those kinds of things. And, and since none of us play undead consistently, and there's going to be four undead armies at this tournament out of like 38 people, which is a fairly high percentage. Uh, it, it's important for everybody in our team to look at these battle reports and understand what units are effective and what units, you know, like I said, what units you feed, what units you divert, uh, what units you know that you can take down with the right charge. So uh, I'm hoping this helps everybody. And uh, I think it will. Take care, folks.